Sorry, I was so busy clicking around with things that I didn't realise I was live. Hello, you're there. My light is there and another light is there. It's all very discombobulating. So, happy 2022. Welcome back to the Amazon Interview Wiz. As always, I'm going to ask you, if you haven't been here before, please, could you just type in the comments section, just a little, hi, Gigi, happy 2022, woo, so that I know that you can actually hear me. You don't have to be as excited as I am about 2022, by the way, but it would just be nice to know that you're out there and you can hear me. It looks like you're out there. I can see, ah, there we go. We have a few people. Ahmed, hello, welcome, welcome. Nemi? I'm going to go for Nemi. Is that, is that right? Broadly speaking, is that okay? Excellent. Okay. I'm going to assume it is. If it's not, do tell me. Um, Morris. Hello. Morris. Maurice could be either, but hello. Welcome. Cole. Excellent. Hopefully I've got that right. Oh, Kevin. Right. So it's Kevin from Canada. Excellent. Thanks, Kevin. You beat me to it. So Everyone else that's arrived, I really, really like to know where you are coming from. So we already know that we've got Kevin in Canada. Bet it's cold there, Kevin. Bet it's not warm. Love to know where everyone else is coming from. The second pronunciation for Maurice. Ah, good. Okay, I got that right, Maurice. At least, well, you know, second time lucky, as they say. But let me know where you are coming from. So we've got uh, Criselda. Is that right, Criselda from... Livermore. Now I have to tell you, Chriselle, that I have no idea where Livermore actually is. So a little bit more data, uh, data on that would be useful. Um, we've got Marisa's from Jamaica. Excellent. Universal Gnome, welcome back from the UK. Woo, up the Brits. Uh, Ahmed, Neme, where are you from? That would be good to know. Sorry, I've lost my slipper. I don't know what I've done with my slipper. I literally had it on my foot a second ago and now it's no longer on my foot. That is most peculiar. Anyway, okay. So, oh, we've got Fahad from Dubai. Welcome, welcome. Oh, it's so lovely to see you all. Um, I've had a, a week, maybe even two weeks off actually doing live sessions over the holiday season, as I know our American friends like to say. I've had a lovely, lovely rest, I have to say. But now, sadly, today, it is time to get back to work. Um, boo! But, you know, could be worse. I could have to get up at 5.30 in the morning and commute an hour and a half into London, which I don't have to do anymore. So that's always exciting. Right, so I reckon it's going to be a bit of a quiet house today. People are just getting back for the new year. I didn't have all my advertising up. I've really struggled to get back into the flow of things, I have to tell you. A bit disappointed in myself. Um, but hey, look, whoever's here is here. We'll do our thing. Hopefully, I'll be able to give you the answers that you're looking for. And then the crowds will just be descending upon us in the first quarter of 2022. Right, so let me just say hi to a few more people and... Um, We'll just get stuck into it. Okay. Oh, Criselda, wine country in the Bay Area. Well, wine country. Who could go wrong living in the wine country, honestly? Oh, Ahmed's from Egypt. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. We've got Tracy. Oh. Ooh. Awesome. Tracy, we're going to come to you in a second. I was just getting distracted by Tracy's little narrative there. Ah, Neme from Mexico. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, okay, right, let's get going. We're losing people, we're gaining people, we're losing people, who knows? But right, and my hair's looking shocking today. Not that I'm sure you care all that much, but still. Oh, and Tanmay from Boston. Excellent. Right, so let me just do my introduction. If you don't already know me, I am Gigi. And I used to be a senior leader and most particularly a bar raiser at Amazon. If you want to know why I care about being a bar raiser and why I bother telling you all, being a bar raiser at Amazon gives you a different perspective on the interview process. Pretty much everyone who's in a kind of a manager, kind of L5 and above role in Amazon has to interview because they're hiring all the time. They need bazillions of people to interview. But if you are just a normal Amazonian interviewing or a hiring manager, you tend to only interview for your own team or maybe adjoining teams to yourself. If you are a recruiter, 
you may be interviewing kind of phone pre-screening, not phone screening, pre-screening candidates for the space that you're recruiting for. All recruiters work in a particular space. So whether they're recruiting for loss prevention managers or software development or cloud solutions architects or vendor managers, et cetera, they all have their own specialist area. So they'll only be pre-screening candidates for that particular area. When you're a bar raiser, like I was, you are a specially qualified person. You have to go through a whole training program. Great fun it is. And you are then qualified to effectively interview and bar raise for any role in Amazon. You can interview tech or non-tech. You have a specialty. My specialty was non-tech, but I also did tech. You can interview on any role. So I interviewed dozens of different, different job families and anywhere in the world, any country. So I interviewed across many different countries as well. I think about 10. Anyway, it effectively means as a bar raiser, you get a perspective on the Amazon interview process that pretty much no one else is going to get. You think the Amazon interview process is very standard. It's not. There's huge amounts of deviation of the whole process all around the organization. Different teams do things different ways. If you're a bar raiser, you get that perspective where others don't. Whilst I was working at Amazon to keep my story going, as I was bar raising, I could tell a big difference between people who got specialist coaching for preparing for their interview process and those that didn't. They understood the leadership principles, they knew exactly what to say, they knew how to structure their examples, they knew the Amazonisms, and they did better, end of story. Started looking into how much it costs, it's not cheap. You know, a solid interview is gonna cost you $200 an hour. There are some people out there charging a couple of thousand dollars for their preparation programs. I felt that was, a bit exclusive. So I created my YouTube channel. And then I decided to leave Amazon. And I created a little business of my own, the Amazon Interview Wiz, where I created digital program of training that will tell you pretty much everything that you need to know to do really, really well in your Amazon interview process at hopefully a pretty affordable price, particularly if you're in the Western economy. I appreciate the Eastern economy is a little bit different. My goal is Amazon interview expertise for everybody. So I have my YouTube channel. I have LinkedIn. I'm now on Twitter. I have some TikTok stuff going on. I know I'm old, shouldn't be on TikTok, but I'm on TikTok. And of course, my academy and then these free sessions of which you are about to partake. So that's my little intro. Please do hang around until the end because I have an amazing freebie to give you uh, from my course, completely, completely free that I promise you, you'll love and you will get great value from. So do not leave before you collect your access to that. How we're gonna run this today, simple. You are gonna ask me your questions down the comment section on the right hand side there. I'm gonna try and pick ones that I think are useful for everybody. Please don't ask me generic, hey, Gigi, I've got an interview tomorrow. Any tips? Because, yeah, loads of tips, like three hours worth of tips, probably even more than that at this stage on my YouTube channel. So if you're just after general stuff, then please just check out the YouTube channel first. Equally, if you have a super specific question about a particular technicality associated with the role that you're applying for, I might not be able to answer it for you. So I'll let you know if I think I can't answer it just so that you don't keep asking the same question over and over and over. Right, so on that note, I reckon we'll run for maybe 30 or 45 minutes today and we will see how it goes. So let me scroll through. I don't think I've forgotten to tell you anything. No, don't think so. So let me just scroll through and see what questions. I'm having real trouble with my mouse today. I think it's finally died on me. I did recharge it, but it took a battering yesterday when I was having problems with Twitter. So I think I've probably destroyed it with my fury. You wouldn't think I was a person with bad temper, but there's a dark Gigi. There is. She's in there. Right, so let's get going. So first of all, okay. Oh, cool. Let's just quickly, let's all congratulate Tracy Bruce because it's always nice when people congratulate us, isn't it? So happy Monday. Yeah, I, I totally lost track of the days of the week because of the uh, holiday period. And you've got yourself a promo in Amazon. So you are now an L5 Woo! Go Tracy! Congratulations. 
big achievement. It's definitely hard to get into Amazon from the outside, but Tracy will be able to pay testimony to the fact that even when you're inside Amazon, trying to get a promo is no easy thing. So well done, Tracy. Congratulations. I hope this is the start of an amazing 2022 for you. Right, let's move on then and see what we have. I'll say hello to people as they arrive as well. Um, okay, yes. So can I share a sample of tell me about yourself and why Amazon? So I certainly can because I did one yesterday on a Twitter space that I was on yesterday. So I will do that for you briefly now. You're lucky I've still got my notes and I'll just read it to you quite honestly. So I'll do that quickly for you now. What I will say is I do have a, um, a good video on my YouTube channel about why Amazon and what you could, could and should focus on for your why Amazon example. I did one very quickly yesterday. Now, when I do why Amazon or the why this job for myself, which is possibly a bit different from what I recommend for other people, I do it based on a philosophy that I have, which is I think it's a terrible question. I don't think it's particularly useful for learning about someone's capabilities. It tells you about someone's motivation, sure, but if they're going to put themselves through the Amazon interview process, you've got to already be convinced the fact that they're motivated because it's hard, hard, hard work. So I tend to keep my why Amazons for myself very short and snippy because I want to get onto the leadership principle questions as soon as possible. I know some other people are not comfortable with that approach. So the video that I've created on my YouTube channel uh, comes off a bit more of a comprehensive approach. But hey, I'll give you one that I did myself when I went on uh, Twitter space yesterday. So I'm just going to read it to you here. Maybe I should move my camera. Better not actually. I've stuck it to um, my laptop. So this is how I approach why Amazon for me. Now, I'm an L7, so pretty senior. So... I try and keep it short and sweet because it's much more relevant for me to get onto my 20 year career and talking about my experiences. But here we go. So obviously, the most important thing to remember is that when you answer why Amazon, it's got to be based on the role that you're applying for. You can't just kind of come up with a random, why do I want to work for this enormous behemoth Amazon? You've got to make it specific for the role that you're applying for. So I might regret doing this, but here's the one I created for yesterday when I was doing this yesterday. So I've got a 22 year career as a big tech marketer. So, oh, this was a, actually, this was in response to walk me through your resume. So pretend, imagine it's walk me through your resume. Okay, so I've got a 22 year career as a big tech marketer. What you can see from my resume is a really strong theme of working for organizations and projects that combine data and an analytical and customer behavior elements of marketing. This is the marketing job we're interviewing for, by the way, to deliver large scale projects with big results. My last role as the marketing director at British Telecom came about because the CEO was looking for someone who could offer for both creative design orientated thinker, as well as someone who was very logical and process orientated. My ability to think outside of the box and effectively restructure their proposition enabled us to turn their business around from loss making to profit within 12 months. You can also see that I've been a people manager for 18 years of my 22 year career, developing teams and helping them build their skill set and support them in evolving their careers even beyond my team has always been a high priority for me and where I get a lot of professional fulfillment. What's brought me to this role and why I'm applying for this role is that Prime Video seem to be looking, oh, by the way, this is me pretending I'm interviewing for Prime Video, which was the first role I interviewed at Amazon. Prime Video seems to be looking for marketers who can both fit into the Amazon way of working with really, really strong process and analytical strengths, but also that you need someone to inject kind of customer insight perspective into what is essentially a very emotive product, content, viewing content, movies, TV, it's all very emotional. So that's a particular strength of mine. Plus, 
with the philosophy of the ever raising bar, which I hugely admire. And I know out there in the market, it's really, really well understood. I know that I will enjoy the people development challenge that comes with that. And given my record of really developing strong leaders in my previous organizations, I actually believe I have a lot to offer Amazon in one of its most fundamental and cultural foundations. That's why I'm here. All right, that was my spiel, right? It's obviously very, very specific to me. As I say, I probably don't go into the level of detail that if you watch my video, I talk about there in my video. That's because at my level, I don't want to spend so much of my time convincing them that I really want to work at Amazon. I'm an L7. I'll be going through many, many, many rounds. If I'm here and interviewing, then that's evidence enough that I want to work at Amazon. I choose to try and move on as quickly as possible to the core of the interview. When you're more junior, I know that possibly isn't quite the approach that you'd want to take, but you asked me the question. So there is the answer for you. But do go check out my video on the YouTube channel. It's literally step by step, piece by piece guide on how you can go about constructing the why Amazon question for yourself. So Ahmed, thank you very much for the answer. Apologies if my acting skills weren't so great looking from screen to screen to screen, but hopefully you've got a flavor of it. Okay, so what else do we have? Oh, we've had a few more joiners as well, which is always exciting. Hello, everybody. Welcome to 2022, just outside London. I sounded really London when I said that, didn't I? London, not my nice posh plumber accent that I try and work on. Okay, let's... <laughs> I know I babble sometimes, I know. Right, so what other questions do we have? Ah, Ahmed. So it's another question. What's the ideal roadmap for preparing for the leadership principles? So, OK, let's talk about the ideal roadmap for preparing for the interview process rather than the leadership principles, because it's all part of the same thing. I'm going to point you once again to my YouTube channel where I've got a new video that I have. It's the last one I put out just before the holiday season. It's the 10 step guide to preparing for your Amazon interview process. I'm not going to go through the 10 step guide now because that was a good 10, 15 minute video. I think it's quite long. So Ahmed, seriously, just go check out my channel, go find that 10 step video. And literally it takes you step by step by step exactly through you want, what you want to do to prepare and get yourself in a good space. Hey, Carl. So is the writing exercise something that's done online and timed or is it something that's submitted like a Word doc? Yeah, it's a Word doc that you submit. It's not done online. It's not timed. So you can take as long as you like to do it. There is a eight thousand character limit i think and two pages so whichever one comes first but those are the only constraints there are two questions that they rotate through that you can pick from but yeah do it in your own time um the stipulation they have is that you do do it yourself so a whole bunch of people contact me and ask if i will help them with their writing assessment i will say now that no i don't do that there are other coaches that don't hold the same um ethical standard as I do against that one, but they are very clear that you are supposed to do that for yourself. So please don't come asking me if I'll help you with that because I'm afraid I won't. All right. Okay, quick one, Ahmed, you're asking, can I review your job description and tell you which leadership principles are relevant? I can for a $50 fee. So if you are interested in that, you can go and look at the details, I think, of any of my videos and you'll find a link there to my job description service. So go check that out. OK. Mm, OK. So Tanmay, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining. So if you've used some of your best examples in the first two screenings, can you reuse that examples in the loop? Yes, you can. So I do have quite a lot of content on my channel about repeating and how you can repeat. So here it summarize up. I say to candidates, if you can avoid repeating, try to avoid it, right? Try to avoid it. But in many cases, candidates can't avoid repeating, particularly if, as you say, you've used your strongest examples and you, you want to be able to bring them back. So if you are going to repeat an example, what you need to do is hopefully you 
listened to my advice from my YouTube channel and actually wrote down the questions that you were asked in your early rounds and you then know which answers you gave to which questions. You can then look at that and reflect on, well, what leadership principle were they asking me for that particular question? And then reshape your answer for when you go into the final round to make that situation reflective of a completely different leadership principle. So when you tell it again, you can tell it in such a way that it sounds like a very different story. So I do I do demonstrate how you can do this in my Amazon Interview Wiz Academy Interview Preparation Masterclass, where effectively what you do is if you understand all of the elements of each of the leadership principles that they really care about, you can recraft stories so that although the situation is the same situation, you effectively completely change your task, your tasks becomes something else. And then all of the actions that you talk about are associated with the task, which is associated with the leadership principle. So yes, you can, you must reach, sorry, did that make a noise? You must reshape your example. The second thing I will say is repetition is okay. The more senior you get, the less okay it is. Now there's no written policies about this. There's no rule in Amazon how many times someone can repeat. I personally feel, felt as a bar raiser and through my training as a bar raiser, that when someone is going for a senior role and they've got quite a lot of career experience behind them, they should be able to really have a minimum number of repeats because you're looking for a high performing, consistently high performing individual. And with a long career behind them, they should be able to come up with plenty of fresh examples. So for maybe an L7 and L8, I probably wouldn't expect to hear more than one example repeated. As you get more junior and you have less tenure behind you, then it's more understandable that you need to repeat. So when you're talking about L5s, L6s, you know, probably I'd be okay with two examples repeated. As you get into the L5s and the L4s, much more junior, much less tenure behind them. And therefore, it's not uncommon to see three examples repeated throughout a loop process. So, yes, you can repeat. Please, please reshape it for a completely different leadership principle than you used the first time. And just be cognizant of how much career you have behind you to be able to justify not being able to come up with fresh examples. OK. I hope that helped. Moving on then. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Universal No. So does the telephone interview, so that's early rounds, so that everyone's on the same page. There's so many different terms used for the different rounds in the Amazon interview process. The um, early rounds used to be called phone screens because we all used to do them literally just on a telephone. But now with the uh, kind of the growth of video, a lot of those screens are done on video. So Universal Gnome is talking about the early rounds, whether it's round one or round two. Sometimes you'll have both. Sometimes you'll only have one. Anyway, do they play an important role during or after the loop? You were told you were done well and curious it will have any further impact. So The broad rule is been and done. Each interview step takes you to the next step. And that's the limit of its value. Once it's done, it's done. And the credit that you've got for doing well in that has led you to the next interview. When it comes to the final round, the main source of the evidence that is used to make a decision as to whether you are raising the bar or not is what was gathered in final round. That is the primary source. Now, if in final round, they feel that they need some additional evidence to kind of support or counter a particular perspective or set of data gathered in the final round, they will go back to the interview notes from the earlier rounds to see if they can gather some additional data. So as an example, I sat on many debriefs where the conversation was had that we were concerned about the dive deep element associated with candidates. It's a big point of failure for candidates in Amazon. 
And what we would very regularly do is ask ourselves, well, okay, if we didn't gather the dive deep evidence here that we're looking for in Luke, let's go back to their phone screen notes and see if there's any evidence in there that might make us feel a bit more comfortable about their level of dive deep. Sometimes you find it, sometimes you don't. But it's um, a kind of a last resort data source, I suppose, rather than a primary data source that would be used in Loop. Okay, Loop debrief. Hope that was useful, universal gnome. Right, moving on then. Okay, right. <laughs> There's an irony here for had that I didn't that I found it hard to understand your question, and your question is about understanding the answer to the question. So embedded in irony. Oh, and look, I can see it's like, ooh, here's. Gigi hiding. Okay. <laughs> I need to, I need to sort out my camera. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. Oh my God. Camera issues. Is that okay? I'm having some major camera issues to be on. There we go. That's much better. Yeah. My, my son stole my camera. I think he carried it upstairs by the cord and now the whole thing's wobbly. Curse him. Right, for so many reasons. Right, moving on, sorry. You have a loop for DCEOs forward slash EOT. Anybody's guess what that means? <laughs> in data cent in AWS data centers. My question is in loop. I said the bar raisers mostly not from the same team. Yes, not mostly. They will not be from the same team. End of story. If you tell you examples which are completely technical background, will they be able to understand? Right. So, um, well, I can't tell you whether that particular person will be able to understand what you're saying. But the, the point is that if you are talking to somebody who you know doesn't come from your technical background, you are going to have to find ways to make sure that your story is understandable. So if there is an acronym, explain what the acronym means. Case in point here for had DCEO EOT. Then I explain what the acronym, acronym means. If there is an important process or bit of technology that it's important if the it's important for the interviewer to understand in order to understand your story, then you need to take the time to explain it. So will they understand? Your, techie, your technical speak about your particular subject area, if you show no sympathy for the fact that they're not from your area, probably not. So you have to take ownership for explaining the things that need to be explained that are core to the narrative. Now, sometimes things don't need to be explained that are core to the narrative. I was doing um, some one-to-one -one coaching with a candidate about an hour ago, and he said to me that we were, um, oh, we were launching a... WCS system in this particular business, et cetera, et cetera. Now we were talking, the question I had asked him was about earned trust. So I knew I didn't really need to know the nature of the system that he had launched because earned trust is all about people and it wouldn't matter what the system was. So I let it go. I didn't stop him and ask him and he didn't stop to tell me and that was fine. It had no impact on my understanding of his narrative. Now, if he was going to tell me and invent and simplify answer and he was going to tell me about inventing and simplifying in a WHS system, I think that's what I said it was, then I got to know what a WHS system actually is in order for me to understand the rest of his narrative. So you have to make a judgment call for had in terms of how important is the technical aspect of your example going to be in order for your interviewer to understand your behaviors, right? Anyone who's interviewing your bar raiser, they're trying to understand your behaviors, not your technical solutions, not the systems and processes and the decisions that you made from a technical standpoint. They're trying to understand your behaviors. So all you need to do is provide enough understanding of the technical elements of your example so that your behaviors are make sense in the context of the story. So practice. Go find a non-technical person and tell them your story. And if their minds are boggled and they don't understand a clue of what you're saying, chances are you need to do a little bit more work in terms of explaining it. Hope that was helpful. Okay, moving on to Maurice. 
Oh, okay. Oh, uh, mm, okay. Yeah. So you've got an interview for an SDE role in Ireland next week. Very nice. Dublin, I assume. I lived in Dublin for four years. Uh, bring a raincoat. You've been preparing for a while and it's been a bit overwhelming. I know. How can you manage this effectively? So that's a tricky one because, I mean, the first thing I'll say to you is, you've got two things that make it even harder that many people don't have, which is you're obviously going to have to manage the coding side of things and you're going to need to manage the behavioral side of things. When it comes to managing the amount of investment that you put into learning the behavior side of things, honestly, and I know I'm going to say this, of course I would say this because it's my business, but I genuinely think a small investment in a product like mine or there are other I have competitors out there that also have similar types of products not as good as mine obviously but um, they give you a framework and they tell you step by step by step by step what you need to do and how you need to do it and that means you can just drown out all of the other noise and you can just follow this thing step by step by step because there's a ton of information out there I keep making videos I don't know like 30 hours worth of videos now so you know being honest, and I'm not trying to plug my product at this point, maybe I should because other people that do YouTube do that much better than I do. My failure is not to plug myself enough. But I genuinely think that if you can make a small investment in um, a preparation solution that just gives you the step by step guide, it's well worth the return on the investment. The other thing is, you know, I do I have a free one, which is my 10 step guide from uh, that's on my YouTube channel. So go use that and that will give you an awesome structure. On the SDE side of things, Morris, my biggest tip for you is to go to a place called um, sdeskills.com. Um, it is a group of software development engineers who support each other in interview prep and developing software engineer skills. Loads of the people on there are either ex-Amazonians or are also currently interviewing at Amazon or are Amazonians. They're probably the best people to give you guidance on how to structure your preparation from a time management point of view to be an SDE and what you need to focus on and what you don't need to focus on. First step of that is to go to my YouTube channel. I have an amazing interview with a guy called Vivek, who is a, who's like a 10 year Amazonian and now he works at Meta. <laughs> got it right. Um, and we've got a whole video about SDEs and there's a support sheet that goes along with that. And there's links to sdeskills.com on that video. So head over there. So I hope that's helpful. I know it's difficult. There's a huge amount of information out there. You just need to find someone you can trust, someone who's simplified it down for you, and then pretty much ignore everybody else. I hope that's helpful. Okay, moving on then. Oh, hey, Maria. So best piece of advice, oh, I better read this out loud in case anyone's listening to it rather than watching it. So you have your loop tomorrow, okay, and you've been preparing, good, good, it's a good start. What is my best advice for calming nerves? So once again, funny, I know, I do have a video about managing nerves on my YouTube channel. Maria, honestly, it's very dependent on what works for you. Um, I have a colleague of mine and he swears by meditation, swears by meditation for calming nerves. I, on the other hand, am incapable, literally incapable of meditation because I cannot control the monkey, as they call it, that's going on in my brain. So for me, I dance around the place and sing. <laughs> that's how I get ready for in the last few minutes before an interview is jumping around the place and singing and getting all happy because that gives me a whole bunch of adrenaline, which then over overcomes the nerves. But I think, Maria... You just need to bear in mind a couple of things. Please do check out the video. The first is it's not one and done. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't go your way this time, there will always be another time. This is not something that you can never come back from if you don't get it right. So that's the first thing to really, truly kind of bear in mind. Second thing, and this I think is so important and candidates really forget this one, which is 
Your interview is not a combative situation. I see so much, I was gonna swear, but then YouTube will probably cut the video. So I see so much BS on places like LinkedIn with career coaches that effectively set up interviews as being some kind of a battleground or a competition or a me against you situation when it comes to interviewers and recruiters. Maybe it sells more products for them. I don't know. Um, it's not. Right? Your interviewer, their job, Maria, is to help you. Right? You are trained at Amazon, part of making great hiring decisions, which is the training at Amazon, teaches that your responsibility as an interviewer is to help the candidate give you the evidence that you need, that they need, yeah? It's not all on you, Maria. If you haven't structured your example perfectly, your interviewer's job is to ask you the right questions so that they can get the information that they need out of you. So you're not alone in that room or on that screen when it comes to the person who's responsible for making a good interview. Amazon interviewers want you to succeed. They're trained to help you succeed. At the end of the day, that interviewer goes into that interview, and this is the third thing to remember, Maria, praying that you are going to be successful. Because if you are successful, they don't have to interview anybody else. They don't want to be interviewing. They want to be back at their desks delivering their key metrics on their business. Interviewing is a massive part of an Amazon, uh, Amazon Amazonian's job. And it's on top of their job. You don't get any brownie points for interviewing. You still got to deliver all of your metrics plus interview. So if you do well, they don't have to interview anybody anymore, or at least they can move on to the next rec. So bear that in mind as well. They are almost as invested in your success in that interview as you are. Okay. I hope those things were helpful. Do check out the video. I think I say more or less the same thing in the video, but I did it like nine months ago, so I don't quite remember. So check that one out. It might have some extra stuff in it. Okay, do this one quickly. I'll try if I get my mouse to work. Come on, mousy, mousy. Oh my God, I think I really do. Oh, there it is. I think I killed my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> my rage yesterday killed my mouth. Oh, dear. All right. Is it normal for the recruiter? I shouldn't do that. I look too relaxed, don't I? Is it normal for the recruiter to take more than five days to confirm the first phone interview after you submit your availability? There is no normal. There is no normal in that process. So it's entirely dependent on how busy they are. And I've heard of some candidates where it's been torturously long to be able to get sessions booked into the diary. I've had other candidates who made an application one day and then they were in, they were interviewing three days later. I don't recommend that as a strategy, by the way. So I'm afraid there's no normal. So that probably doesn't help you, but at least it maybe makes you feel a bit better that you're not going through some weird edge case experience that nobody else does. Okay, moving on then. Oh, Betty, Betty's back. Oh, you, I'm so excited. Uh, well done, Betty. You got both offers from your split loop. That is insane. Not just one job offer, but two. That is extraordinary, Betty. Congratulations. I know you worked really hard. You were here pretty regularly. So huge congratulations. You start in a few weeks. Don't forget me when you're on the inside, Betty. Amazing. I know it's going to be a start of an incredible career for you and an awesome 2022. So everybody clap, Betty. Please clap, Betty. Right. OK, so conscious of time, before we go any further, I almost forgot this bit. I need to ask you a favor. So in order for my content to surface in the YouTube algorithm, it needs positive signals. Those positive signals are when you give it a thumbs up or you make a little comment. That's true of this session, but it's also true of any of my other videos that you watch. 
So I'm going to take this moment to pause and ask you if you would please, please kindly just give this session a thumbs up. OK, and because that takes a couple of seconds, I have an exciting little video to keep you amused whilst you go away and do that. I used to sing a song and have a little kind of like stick thing. I poked about the place, but it was naff. So I created these. I hope you don't think I'm too crazy. And uh, there are some new ones coming shortly. So here we go. Three, two, one. I'm going to play it. And then please just go stick a thumbs up. Like the stream, or like the stream, or like the stream, or like the stream, like the stream, or like the stream, or like the like the like the stream, or like the stream, or like the stream, or like the stream, or like the stream, like the stream, or like the stream, or like the like the like the stream, 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 Okay, so I'm sorry, you saw me fiddling around with things. I'm really struggling with my mouse. I hope you didn't think that was too nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, I like doing these things. They amuse me. So thank you very much if you have given the thumbs up to the stream. If you haven't, why? That's so mean. I'd be very grateful. All right, let's move on. My mouse is literally dying. So um, hopefully we're not, we're going to, not have massive issues before we finish this up. Let me pick my next questions. Yeah, okay, Maurice. For technical roles, what's the weight assigned to technical performance versus behavioral performance? There is no weighted contribution. It isn't a mathematical kind of um, equation to get you to an outcome. They're both important. They're both equally important. You have to prove that you have the technical capability and you have to prove that you raise the bar. In my experience as a bar raiser, we Amazon tend to be a bit more forgiving on the technical side of things, because if perhaps your skills aren't quite as strong as they might want them to be, but you are really impressive on the leadership principles, chances are that the hiring manager will say to the bar raiser that they are comfortable to invest in further training for you because they believe that they will be able to get you up to the technical still stand technical skills standard that they're looking for. If you are amazing technically, but you don't raise the bar on the leadership principles, you're definitely not getting in. So no mathematical weighted contribution. They're equally as important, but I would say there's more forgiveness on the technical side of things than there is on the leadership principle side of things. Okay, I hope that helps. What else do we have? Hey, so you're interviewing for a role for a front end engineer, but it doesn't state the level of the role. It never does. Is there a way for you to find out without asking them directly? Not really, not really. So you can make some judgment calls if you have, if you've been on the inside, you can make some judgment calls about broadly what amount of years experience correlates to L4, L5, L6, L7, L8, et cetera. But it's very, very rough. Um, Technical roles are difficult because they don't tend to follow the standard nomenclature of job levels. So there's a standard nomenclature, which is a something manager is an L4 and L5. A senior something manager is an L6. A senior manager something or principal something is an L7. And then a director, SVP, et cetera. They are obviously eights and then up to nines. In the technical roles, they just don't tend to follow that nomenclature. So no, there really is no easy way of just looking at the job description and working out exactly what uh, level it is. You're best off to ask if you really want to know. My position on it is who cares? I, it doesn't really matter what level role you're interviewing for. As long as the role offers you the scope to challenge yourself and grow and the compensation is adequate for you for what you're looking for, then it doesn't really matter what the job level is. I think people obsess far too much about the job level and uh, it's probably not worth worrying about. Okay. Oh, someone asked the same question just below you. So you have your answer there, Criselda. 
What else do we have? Oh, have we got any other questions? Okay, so let me just check and see if I've missed any questions because we seem to be nearly there. We're almost at time anyway. So if my mouse works, we will scroll and see if they've missed anything. If you have any more questions, do type them in there. I don't think I missed anything. Right, the Starvo, I'm not quite sure what you mean by this. If they do not want, you will not work for them. Yeah? Yeah? If they don't want you, they, you won't work for them? Yeah, that makes sense. Not quite sure whether that was a question or a statement or what, but okay. Yeah, I think we can all align on that as a philosophy. All right, so I don't think I've missed anything in particular. So one thing, oh, yeah, okay. So let me just quickly do this one. So how long can be allotted to the systems design part? All right. So Gayatri, again, there's a lot of variation in teams. Teams can choose to kind of create their interview structures the way they like. So it might be that in your first round for um, an SDM role, they might just 100% focus on the systems design element of the interview and may never even ask you a leadership principle question in round one. Or they might decide they want to have a leadership principle question in round one. So they'll spend 80% of the interview on the systems design part and then 20% on the on the behavioral piece. Or they might decide that they want 50-50. So I can't tell you exactly how much time will be spent because it's actually completely up to the team themselves to decide how they want to structure those interviews. So just be prepared for both and then you can't go wrong. Okay. So I'm going to try and hide that. Great. We've got one from Sami here. OK, can you use the same projects for multiple leadership principles? OK, so I don't know if you were here earlier, Sami, but yes, you can. You can use the same example for a different leadership principle. You simply have to make sure that you completely reshape your example if it's got lots of meat in it hopefully you'll have a couple of leadership principles in it and just when you tell the story really you need to make sure that your situation is the only thing that really kind of sounds common and then once you get to task then you need to really be reshaping it for the different leadership principles so that's one way that you can use the same project for multiple leadership principles another way that you can use the same project for multiple leadership principles and this happens a lot to people who run big transformation projects or people that do big research projects is they have things that literally span an entire year they think about it as one project and it literally spans an entire year if that's kind of where you're going with this Sami, and this is your situation what you can do and what works very well and i coach people to do is to break that project down into different phases. So chunk it up so that although it's part of the same project, it's actually got very different phases within it. And so you can say, when you talk about it in your example, I'm going to talk to you about my project of, di of digitally transforming the um, uh, shop floor for Mercedes. Uh, but that was, that was a 12 month project. So I'm going to particularly focus on the early stage of the project where we were just starting to scope out the requirements. Situation was blah, blah, blah. Next time you can say, I'm going to talk to you about the project where I was transformation doing a digital transformation for the shop floor for Mercedes. The project lasted about 12 months. So I'm going to talk to you about the middle portion of that project where we were starting to get into build. Situation was, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So even though it's the same overall project, you're actually talking about a very different phase of that project. I hope that helps. Okay, Sam. Hello, Sam. Have we 
that before, Sam? Your name looks familiar. Anyway, will Luke always be face to face or could it be via video call? I think most of them are video calls now. I don't think there are many teams that are now back to face to face, which is a shame because I always loved doing face to face um, interviews. It was something different about it versus doing it over video call. But Sam, I would expect the majority of people are now doing their interviews over VC rather than in person. Okay, so next question then. Come on, Mousy, you're welcome. Is it considered pushy if you email them politely asking about the interview confirmation you've been waiting for? No, it's not pushy. Look, you know, this is your process, this is your life. I'm sure you've got things to do that are beyond the Amazon interview experience. So no, if you need that information, to your point, be polite. I'm sure you would be. But no, it's not too pushy. If you need it, you ask for it. OK, and if there's a good reason why you need it as well, add that to your email. I don't know. I'm trying to book my children's parent teacher night. Uh, so I would really like to know when this is happening so I can plan accordingly, that type of thing. OK, does relocation bonus apply for a new employee? There's no such thing as a relocation bonus. There's relocation support for certain roles where the hiring manager has approved funding to fund someone to relocate for the role. Um, you would need to talk to your recruiter about whether relocation is available on that particular role. In the main, the policy is that you cannot provide relocation below an L6 level but they do make exceptions sometimes. So best thing to do is just check with your recruiter as to whether relocation is on the cards. COVID has thrown a huge amount of spanner in the works when it comes to relocation and visas and things like that. So definitely worth asking. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, okay. This is an interesting question, Universal Gnome. No one's ever asked me this, so I might have to pause momentarily to think about it. So your loop is on the 12th. OK, so you've got a bit of time. You're practicing answering the leadership principles. Good. I'm glad you're at the point of practicing already. Looks like you have managed your timing well. Do I find that one that is common for people to struggle to answer? Hmm. So... I was generally disappointed with dive deep answers as a general rule in my time interviewing and bar raising at Amazon. That's the leadership principle where I think most people fall down in the Amazon process. And that's because in the vast majority of the world outside of Amazon, people just don't get to the level of detail that they do in Amazon. This is particularly true for the more senior people. Um, in Amazon, senior people still know pretty much as much as people two levels below them, maybe even three levels below them about the data, the performance, the metrics, the processes, the systems. In Amazon, leaders stay connected to the detail, which is the definition of dive deep. Um, I found interviewing, particularly when I was interviewing people at level seven and L8, they just did not have the level of handle on the detail that we would expect at Amazon. This was still true when you spoke to L6s and L5s. Um, sometimes they actually had the detail and you had to drag it out of them to get them to give you the level of detail that you're looking for when it comes to dive deep, what I call analytics, which is understanding the metrics or dive deep discovery, which is about kind of digging in and exploring levels of information. So if I was to say to you what leadership principle should you really try not to disappoint on, it's going to be dive deep. Because if you can raise the bar on dive deep, you're going to be doing better than the vast majority of candidates that, that get there. So 
I hope that's useful. I will, however, actually admit on this one to a bias towards dive deep. Dive deep is my favorite leadership principles and it's one of my strengths. So probably slightly causal rather than correlating that dive deep was one that disappointed me particularly, but it was very often something that was a reason to be not inclined for candidates in my experience at debrief. Okay, so what time is it? We've got a few more minutes, so let's go with that. Okay. All right, so, all right, I'll just cover this one quickly. Does Amazon provide any point of support for relocation for employees that are still finishing their bachelors? I think it's unlikely. Right. If you're if you're a grad, you're going to be coming in at an L5 at best. So I would say no on that one. Again, can't tell you definitively, but uh, certainly when I was working there, we would never have covered relocation for grads in my team. OK. Oh, yeah, this sucks a bit. Hey, 370 Kiran, welcome, welcome. So you've submitted your preferences for interview dates, but you haven't received any update and the dates have passed. Okay, you know, everyone's on holidays, what to expect. Okay, just follow up. Yes, everybody is on holidays and the whole machine is definitely slowing down. No question about that. But um, you should follow them up. Don't panic when I tell you this, but I'm going to say it to you because it's a slight warning. What can happen is your in, your recruiter may just be distracted. Either the role is filled and they haven't yet got round to telling everybody that the role has been filled, or they've actually somewhat down tools on that particular role because they've had to prioritize another role. Or they may just be busy for the holidays. So don't freak out yet. Chase them up. Follow them up. Say you're still really committed to the process. You'd love to get a date in the diary. Okay? Excellent. Right. So I think I've got time for one more and then it's time for my dinner. So let's just have quickly comes to. Oh, OK. Let's just pick the last one. Oh, oh, quickly, I'm going to have to do this. I just spotted this. Rob T. Ah, oh, you received an AWS offer on Christmas week. What a Christmas present. That's awesome. And you're starting in February. Yay, Rob. Congratulations. Everybody, please say congratulations to Rob. Well done, Rob. Great job. And um, what a cool Christmas present. Um, awesome. You're going to have an amazing career going to have an amazing 2022. I've still not got my head around the fact that today is actually 2022, but it is. You're so welcome, Rob. I'm delighted to be able to help you. Um, I've got to say, um, it's a privilege, okay? I and um, somebody else who I'll be sharing some exciting news with you about shortly um, that I'm working with, we consider this to be a privilege, Um we learned some amazing things when we were Amazon. We know how life changing joining Amazon can be financially, intellectually, career trajectory. Um, so I love doing this. I love working with you all and I love hearing your success stories. It's genuinely a privilege to be able to do this. And it's a privilege that I try very, very hard not to abuse and take advantage of. Sure, I try and feed my children off the back of it, but I hope I do it in a measured and ethical and generous way. And you can all call me out at any point if you think I'm not playing the game ethically. Uh, there are plenty of people out there I would love to call out with that accusation. All righty ho. So going to do one last one here and then I'm going to share with you my amazing freebie. So um, you've attended an interview for a senior database consultant, but you couldn't get through the interview, but you were informed to apply for another role. Should you choose other? Yes, 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 yes. As I said to the person earlier who was asking about nerves, it's not a one and done thing. If you don't make it through one interview, it's not as if everybody's going to look at your notes on hire, which is the internal system, and just say, no, this person didn't make it through. We should never consider them again. It doesn't work like that. 
as I understand it, the last update I had from some of my internal, um, my internal Amazonian friends, the majority of people who are being hired at the moment are actually repeats, people that are on their second interview or even on their third interview. A lot of the people that come through my academy are on their second or third time getting into Amazon. So absolutely try again. If you want to work at Amazon and you still feel like it's a place that you want to be, then without question, try again, particularly if they told you to apply for another role. If they thought you were a million miles away from being able to get in, they would tell you to take a cooling off period. They haven't told you to take a cooling off period, which means they think you stand a chance with another role. So go for another role. Do not give up on that little dream. All right. So with that in mind, we are now going to get the most amazing freebie that is on YouTube for Amazon interviewing. I genuinely, genuinely believe that. I've looked at a lot of the other freebies. All right, so go to amazoninterviewwiz.com where you will get my free customer obsession masterclass. Literally, I break down customer obsession for you in a way that you will not find anywhere else on the globe other than if they stole my methodology. Is it possible? Um, Four facets to customer obsession. It is a complex leadership principle. It will tell you all about those four facets. It will tell you what the interviewer is actually looking for in your example. And it will give you a little mock interview of me interviewing me. So you can see how an example might come together in an actual interview. With that, uh, I was proven wrong by this by one of my candidates who went through the whole loop and got two offers. And throughout that whole process, they didn't get asked customer obsession, which really surprised me. So I'll still say, I would expect pretty much everybody, if you make it through to loop, will be asked a customer obsession question. And therefore, in that I was going to give away one of my leadership principle masterclasses, I went for customer obsession, because even if you don't buy any of my other products, at least you will get used from that customer obsession masterclass. Obviously, I want you to love it and buy more products, feed my children. <laughs> I'm joking, they're fine. Um, they can starve for a bit, they're a little bit porky anyway. Um, particularly after Christmas. <gasps> yeah, it's a good course. Please take it. I won't be following you up with marketing or anything like that. So go get it. Enjoy it. I hope you make good use of it. All right. So thank you very much for joining. We are done for today. For those of you who managed to land yourself jobs, I am so proud of you. It's insane. Congratulations. You're going to have an incredible career and incredible 2022. For those of you with interviews coming up, I genuinely wish you the very best of luck. If you're using my content on my channel, please give it a thumbs up. Please send me a little comment. It makes a massive difference in return for hopefully what value I'm giving to you. So for now, enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you next week. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.